we, you know we love the Cowboys. Alex just dropped a fantasy film room breaking down Calvin Ridley. And we, we like all the receivers in a pass-heavy offense like Atlanta. Same thing on the Dallas side of the ball where all three wide receivers can be productive, are weekly startable options depending on matchup. But it's Michael Gallup. I know there's been a lot of concerns about him. I know it's a, a good matchup against the Seahawks. We've seen pretty much every game that the Seahawks have been in has been a high-flying shootout. Uh, their defense is, you know, it took the defense finally crumbling a little bit, the Legion of Boom fully being decimated for them to allow Russell Wilson to start cooking. Uh, and he's given us a feast. So I expect more of the same in this game script. So for Michael Gallup, I feel like this is the get right game. He had eight PPR points in week one, seven in week two. Probably not happy with him up to this point. Are you willing to start him? Are you are you projecting a bounce back here? Because I think I am. I am. I'm keeping him in my flex for this week. Steph, we were looking at the schedule before we recorded for Dallas, and it's like it seems like every single week they're in a matchup that you want all the offensive pieces. And it's because, you know, the division is weak. Obviously, you get a, a non-divisional game here against Seattle, the one last week against Atlanta. But with Dallas, they're one that's just – constantly featured in these high flying shootouts because the defense is weak the offense is high powered um, and I expect another big week here for all the Cowboys pieces I'm fine to put Michael Gallup in my flex I know he's disappointed so far this season but just a touchdown in either one of those games like he's always one play away he's one of these guys that you know some players think about like a golden Tate you need six seven targets to get you know his floor which is five or six catches for 50 yards with Michael Gallup, he can turn a game around in one play. You know, if I'm deciding between two players, sometimes I want to take the upside if I know I'm going to need the points out of my flex spot. So if this is a week where you're going up against a good team, you've got some guys that maybe got injured last week and you need a prayer, a big week. I like Michael Gallup there. I think he's actually a lot safer than other boomer bust options like a Will Fuller. Um, or even like a Robbie Anderson. I'm still taking Michael Gallup over those guys. I think this is a perfect opportunity for him to get right against Seattle, you know, a defense that just gave up 397 passing yards to Cam Newton in the Pats. Yeah, and you think you think Dalton Schultz, a guy that wasn't even on our radar two weeks ago, is going to command 10 targets again in this offense over Michael Gallup? It's not no. happening. It's not happening, especially in this game script. And, I mean, Gallup's been getting some downfield looks. He's really been relegated like we projected with C.D. Lamb now in the mix. Didn't expect C.D. Lamb to, to totally turn up the volume and turn up the heat, I should say, right off the bat. And that's where you've seen some of the Gallup uh, point of diminishing returns with him. But I'm willing to plug him back in. I'm not out on him yet. This is probably, like, hopefully you were able to buy low within the last two weeks on Michael Gallup. Because I think once he explodes and he's back on the scene like he never left, I don't know if you're going to be able to buy him at all. Uh, at a low value, you're going to have to pay up. So I'm all over Michael Gallup uh, now and over the next couple of weeks. After the Seattle matchup, they have Cleveland, the Giants, the Cardinals, the Washington football team, uh, and then the Philadelphia Eagles in week eight. So nice little stretch here coming up for the Cowboys and all their pass catchers. I think we're still, I mean, you're starting Amari Cooper every single week. Uh, C.D. Lamb, you're going to keep plugging him back in. Yep. I know you are. Yeah, absolutely. I love him. I've started him the first two games of the season which I know is a little <laughs> bit gutsy, but it was it was forced. I, I had some major issues on my squad that I had to cover up, and CD was able to do it. Uh, the Seahawks are getting absolutely gashed by slot receivers, giving up 179 yards just last week to Julian Edelman. In a high-scoring game, CD Lamb getting a ton of snaps, 82% of snaps in Week 1, was able to up that last week. I expect him to um, really feast against a beatable Seattle defense. So all three Cowboys wide receivers are full blast in this one. Obviously, you're starting Zeke. Obviously, you're starting Dak. I guess the last piece, I mean, you mentioned him earlier, Steph, on the Dallas side, Dalton Schultz. It's yeah. more of a desperation <laughs> situation, um, but I know he was a hot waiver wire pickup this week. If you spent a lot of fab on him, you probably really needed him. So I guess you're going to have to plug him in. How are you feeling He's about Dalton Schultz He's a week? streamer. If you're a guy like me, like you had, I'll yeah. give you a personal example here. You, you take shots at the end of your drafts. We're in a 14-team league, our home league. Shout out to all the guys in Sunday's Finest. But I took shots at tight end at the end of my draft. And my, my shots were Blake Jarwin and Ian Thomas. So now I'm in a tough situation. I've been streaming Logan Thomas the last couple of weeks. And Dalton Schultz makes sense if you're in a situation like that where you really have nothing. You're just going off the waiver wire. For me, it's either him or it's Mo Ali Cox. Um, and if you weren't able to get Mo Ali Cox, who may have already been on a roster, then it's <laughs> Dalton Schultz. Plug him in there. 
I mean, we didn't love Jarwin just based on his talent. We don't love Dalton Schultz just based on his talent. Schultz gets into the same situation that Jarwin did. I think there's going to be a floor there. He's gonna, not going to see every uh, week a 10 target minimum, but he'll, he'll see decent volume. He'll get the opportunity. He's The tight end is going to be a functional part of that offense. So really quickly before we move on, got to correct myself. C.D. Lamb, 82% of snaps in week one. He 81. did not up it in week two. He had 81% of snaps, so 1% less snaps for C.D. Lamb, but 80% snap count is pretty solid. So he's essentially on the field all the time for Dallas. I expect that to continue this week. On the other side of the ball in this matchup, the Seattle Seahawks, really not much analysis to be done here. You're starting everybody. If you have them, you're starting them. You're starting Russell Wilson. You're starting Chris Carson, who's been great, getting a ton of pass-catching volume as well, so a nice little bump in PPR leagues that we haven't really seen from him in years past. And then, of course, you're starting Lockett and Metcalf. Anything else to add here? Maybe Greg Olson as a, as a flyer at the tight end spot. Anything else? The Seattle is super easy because it's so clear-cut. Like You start Wilson, DK, uh, Tyler Lockett, and Chris Carson. You don't start anybody else. End of story. I don't care what kind of league you're in. So unless you have like an age bonus, <laughs> you might throw Greg Olson in there. But outside of that, it's it's pretty cut and dry.